Hello, my name is Logan and I'm your host, The Mighty Pirate. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about the Grey Death Company, one of the most famous mercenary forces in the inner sphere, with a long and distinguished career. While being referenced in several novels and even more game manuals, the Grey Death Company helped to shape the inner sphere. The Grey Death Legion was the elite mercenary unit of military mastermind Grayson Death Carlisle, starting as an offshoot to the Trillian Lancers, initially set up as a militia unit by Carlisle for the defense of Terrell 1 in 3024. The unit eventually grew to regimental size. The Legion became famous for the discovery of the Helm Memory Corps, which set off a technological renaissance throughout the Inner Sphere, as well as the most effective use of combined arms tactics, culminating in the development of their own battle armors models. However, all good things come to an end when the unit was all but destroyed in 3065 during the defense of Hesperius II against Sky Rebels. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In 3024, on the planet known as Trail 1, the planet defenses were manned by Carlyle's commandos. Under House Steiner, the forces of the Draconis Combine invaded the planet and shattered the defense forces, and forcing the survivors off-planet. The sole survivor of the defense force was the commander's son, Grayson Death Carlyle, and he was hired by the planetary government to build a new defense force and recapture the planet to defend it from any would-be pirates. Surprisingly, under the command of Grayson, they had a great many victories and managed to capture several enemy battle mechs, and in some cases their pilots as well, including Lori Kalmar, who would be his future executive officer and wife. Carlisle also met and befriended Renfred Tor, the unlucky starship captain who had been forced to bring the bandits to Terrell 1. With the help of Tor and his jump ship, Carlisle managed to inform the Lyrian Commonwealth of the developing situation, forcing Draconis Combine to leave Terrell 1 after their forces were unable to destroy Carlisle and his troops in a final battle. Carlisle took the remainder of the Lancers to create a new mercenary unit, the Grey Death Legion. The newly formed Grey Death Legion traveled to Galatea, more commonly known as the Mercenary Star, while seeking employment. There they recruited new members and were hired by a representative of the Ferranthidae Revolutionary Council. The planet had been traded to the Draconis Combine several years earlier by House Steiner as part of a treaty obligation, and many people were engaged in guerrilla war against the Combine forces. The Legion was hired to provide training for the rebels, especially in anti-mech infantry combat. The initial contract was for 900 hours of training but no combat engagements. The unit traveled to Veranthidi and barely succeeded in running the blockade surrounding the planet. Their dropship was severely damaged in running the blockade and crashed on their landing. It quickly became clear to Carlisle that the Legion forces would not simply be able to just train the rebels, but would need to participate in the fighting to ensure that the rebellion was successful, which, without their dropship functioning, was their only chance to leave the planet. Several members of the Rebel Council were against the Legion's participation, primarily due to their concerns of their ability to pay the mercenary unit, but Carlisle succeeded in reassuring them that his forces were committed to the fighting of the injustices on the planet, regardless of their mercenary status. While the Legion trained the rebel pilots and infantry, Draconis forces arranged a Draconis elite strike team raid on the complex which resulted in many of the rebels being killed or captured, including rebel leaders and the Legion's technicians. The Legion's mechs were on a raid elsewhere when the base was attacked and avoided the ambush relatively unscathed. They launched a prolonged guerrilla campaign, increasing their attacks on outposts whenever possible and encouraging outright rebellion by the populace. The rebellion was concluded successfully when Carlisle led a raid to free Lori Kalmar, who had been captured by the Dracronis forces. The raid freed Kalmar and several of the rebellion's leaders. During the raid, Carlisle was able to secure an enemy marauder which would become laterly strongly associated with him. The Legion forces caught the Combine's mechs in a crossfire during the final moments of the rescue, and despite heavy casualties, the rebel forces emerged victorious and the Combine forces abandoned the planet. After the Veranthidi campaign, the Legion signed on with House Merrick for a prolonged series of campaigns against House Leo. The unit performed admirably during several operations and garnered a good reputation. Following their successful capture of Cyrus V in early 3028, the unit planned to return to its land holding of Helm. One of the terms of the contract with House Merrick stipulated that the Grey Death Legion would be granted an extensive fief on the planet. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to either Either the Grey Death Legion or Janos Merrick, the signer of the contract, that fief held an ancient Star League weapons cache, including a field library. 
Learning of the untouched cache of Star League technology, a rogue Comstar Percentor named Emilio Rachan created a Byzantine plot involving a Free Worlds League noble, whereby the Legion was framed for a massacre on Cyrus V, which killed between 12 and 17 million people. The unit was kept uninformed about the atrocities committed following their departure, yet sensing something was amiss, Carlisle led the Legion back to their landhold on Helm. The general outrage produced by the repeated airings of holovids of the massacre resulted in the Legion being declared as outlaws. While the unit was off-world, Free World's League militia units had invaded Helm, believing the story of the atrocity at Cyrus V. They killed or captured many of the unit's dependents who had remained. When the Legion returned, they found their strongholds devastated and were themselves under constant attack from League forces. They eventually learned about the possible existence of a Star League cache on the planet. Carlisle managed to find the cache and realized that the library to be the true target of Rachan's machinations. Besieged and attacked by pursuing Merrick forces, the Grey Death Legion narrowly managed to secure a copy of the Helm Memory Core and a small fraction of the cache's extensive treasures before the entire facility self-destructed. Carlyle felt that the Memory Core was too valuable for humanity at large and too big a blood price had been paid for it to keep it for himself. He made sure that as many copies were created and disseminated throughout the entire inner sphere as possible an action that made him and his unit extremely famous and popular. The unit returned to Galatea to refit and was next hired by a faction within the Lyrian Commonwealth in 3029. In 3030, the Grey Death Legion captured a vast store of supplies and equipment on Darius, growing to regimental size. Because of his attitude and experience with Marek, Carlyle would no longer consider contracts from houses Kurta, Merrick, or Leo. When the clans appeared in 3050 and rolled through any and all opposition, the Grey Death Legion were one of the few units to fight them with some success. The Legion suffered heavy defeats on Sun Ten, where they had been stationed prior to the invasion, losing that world to Clan Jade Falcon, but on Pandora managed to defeat the clans for the first time ever. On Pandora, they used modified battle armor suits and other upgraded technology. With severe damage to the Legion and having acquired a substantial salvage of life, Lost Tech, or as the Legion called it, Found Tech, they became very famous as one of the most premier mercenary units in the Inner Sphere. In 3056, the Legion was gifted the world of Glengarry in a political move by Victor Steiner Davin, but they immediately had to defend the world against Sky Separatists who did not want them there. The defensive guerrilla campaign was led by Alexander Carlyle, son of Grayson and Lori. The younger Carlyle held out until the main force of the Grey Death Company could return home to quell the rebellion. Though successful, the forces on the planet suffered heavy losses. In 3065, Alexander Carlyle joined the Lyrian Guard. Shortly after, his family's forces were sent on a mission they would not come back from. Though they successfully were able to defend the Steiner factories they were sent to protect, the Legion was all but destroyed. What was left of the Legion was turned into security forces, and during the Jihad that happened shortly afterwards, all that remained of the once proud Grey Death Legion was destroyed. When Alexander heard of this news, he had intended to rebuild his family's reputation and forces. However, he could not put these plans into action as the world of Tarakid, which he was stationed at, was bombed from orbit, ending the last remaining member of the family of ragtag mercenaries. That's all that I have to say about the Grey Death Legion. They were one of my favorite factions and was my intro into Battletech. In my next episode, I'll be continuing my faction series. If there's a faction you'd like me to highlight, let me know in the comments section. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching!